The present time is the mirror dimly. We don't see clearly now. We don't have full understanding now. But when we are with Jesus face to face, when He returns and we are with Him, then we will see clearly. And while faith and hope are important, they are no longer necessary when Jesus returns because we're going to be with Him. We don't have to have faith that Jesus exists or that we believe in Him. We're with Him. We don't have to have hope that He's going to keep His promises because we're with Him. The one thing that will continue even when Jesus returns is love. That's why faith, hope, and love are all great, but love is that which keeps going even after the second coming, even after Christ returns, and that everything is just the way it's going to be. Love will continue. You won't have a need for faith, and you won't have a need for love because you're experiencing, or hope, because you're experiencing that. But love will still be, will still have, and that's what's going to exist. How about that for an explanation? Because yeah. in the end, <laughs> uh, that's really huh? That's, I you like that one? Yeah. There could be a difference between love applied before Christ returns and after Christ returns. It's, well, it's, um, it's the same love. I think what Christ would have applied before and after is just that that love continues. So the love that I think Paul would say the love that we show one another now will continue forever. It's the kind of love that Christ came to bring and brought. But the more universal this of love is more apparent after Christ comes. It will be perfect. It'll be perfected, absolutely. Then we'll be experienced in a way that encompasses the others. In its fullness, yeah. yeah. But, you know. We don't have to wait until we die to experience that love. Paul's saying we can do it now. And the way we do it now is we begin treating people in a certain manner. We need to be patient with them. All right? So God's patience with us is basically unlimited. He's still waiting for us. When we turn away from Him, He waits for our return. He waits for us. He doesn't leave us or abandon us. He's waiting and He's patient with us. The ones who get impatient are we. We get impatient with others. They're not coming along fast enough. They're not doing it the right way. And we get impatient. And so I think a lot of this, if you look through the list of all the things Paul says about love, I think he's saying, be more Christ-like in how you love. And look at the way Christ didn't treat people don't do it that way. So, it certainly applies to marriage, 1 Corinthians 13, but it applies in so many more ways than that. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that in the King James Version, does, uh, why do I think mercy? Charity. In the King James Version, the word is charity. <coughs> charity. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way they interpret it without charity. Great point. And charity implies self giving. <coughs> And agape is the Greek word for here, and agape is the self-giving love of God. The, the love that empties is unconditional. The love of Christ. Versus uh, friendship love, filio. Yeah, filio, agape, uh, eros love, sexual kind of love. Different ways. They've got different words for love. We've got one. Pizza, our wife, God, all the same. <laughs> we love them all together. But um, in Greek, they do not. One of the limitations of translations. So charity would be that self-giving love. It has to express itself towards someone else. Not bad one. 
So any other thoughts on that? Very familiar words. Almost so familiar we're numb. You know, sometimes passages are just so familiar that we read right over them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just want you to see them that they're not a moral checklist to see how you're doing. Not that they can't be used that way, but it's more than that. More than just, okay, you say you're loving, are you doing all these things? If it's no, then come on, improve. Um, but it's more than that. It's, it should be a way of thinking, a way of life, and an understanding of who God is. Other questions on, or you want to move on? Should we go to, what do you want to do? First John is the other one on love. First John 3, where God is love. And that's, that's an interesting one. So now we're not just talking actions of God that are loving. We're talking the basis of God is love. So chapter 4, verse 7, because love is from God, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In other words, you can't call yourself a Christian and not act lovingly towards others. And in that regard, it goes right back to James, where faith and works go hand in hand. You can't say you have faith if it doesn't show forth in some kind of a, excuse me, some kind of an action. And uh, in terms of love, if you're not being loving towards others, can you really say that you love God? And this is the this is where we get the difference between our faith being a set of spiritual beliefs or our faith being that in which we live out. And so if faith is lived out in actions, James would say, that's true faith. If you say you believe in the concepts of God but do not live it out in your life, you have an understanding of God but you do not have faith. It's got to show. So John is also 1 John. 1 John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and the Gospel of John probably all written by the same person. Probably not the John of the Gospels. Because this was probably written around the end of the century. John, I think, was killed in about 62. No, John wasn't killed. John died. Peter was killed in 62. Uh, John died of natural causes, but he would have been really, really, really old. Yeah, yeah, he would have been older. So this is probably the gospel writer is the same, but the disciple of Jesus, the beloved disciple, maybe not the same person. This is a different John than wrote Revelations. He's within ten years or so of each other, different John. Uh, okay, so the author. Probably you say the author of 1st, 2nd, 3rd John is also the author of what? The Gospel. The Gospel. Okay, so it's okay. Right. So there's 22 Johns that you're talking about there. John of Patmos and John the Disciple. And John the Disciple, John the author of these books, and John the author of Revelation. Um, yeah, possibly three different people. Oh. The same. So the disciple of John not necessarily wrote any books, period. Not necessarily. Okay. But there's enough connection between the writings, the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, phrases and the like that link together in thinking that they, most scholars will believe the same author wrote all of them. But uh, in any case, what we have here is also church conflict. And John's writing these letters. And so, uh, again, he brings love into the conflict. You've got to treat each other in a loving manner. And that means there's a part in here about listening. you got to listen. You can't just talk. <laughs> there's, a, a, there's a legendary story. It's not scriptural, of course. I think, I think that you probably, I think I told you. 
and I, I think you've heard this before, me, that John, this, the one who's still living at, uh, in, in later years, the guy that lived to a ripe old age, whichever John he was, uh, was in a congregation there somewhere in Asia Minor, and, and uh, they would ask him at the end of the service, to come and say some words before the congregation. And he would make his way down, feebly with a cane, I guess, and, uh, and he would say, turn and face the congregation, and he'd say, love each other. And then he'd go back and sit down with you. So somebody asked him after, how come we always invite you down, Brother John, to say something, and you always say the same thing? Love each other. Said, because if you do that, it's enough. So, I, I, well, and that's like Jesus. Story, Jesus, Jesus basically that. said, you know, if you love God and love your neighbor, you will keep all the 613 commandments. You'll keep them all. If love is the basis of what you do, you don't have to worry about memorizing all the commandments or going down a checklist. If the basis of what you do is truly loving, you've got it. And so, yeah. But we don't want to do that. Right. My frustration in trying to preach is people don't want to hear grace and love talk. They don't want to hear about unconditional love. They want conditions because somehow it makes us feel better. These people are wrong and they're bad. Therefore, you know, let's get right understandings. And we, we feel better if we are certain. Certainty is an anxious response. So when I'm anxious, I want to know this is the way it is. I want to know, I want to be clear on that. So one of the reasons why people love to hear preachers tell them exactly what to do and what steps to follow